Hello. Greetings. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, here we go. Um, yeah, so this time, since I'm still on the, the toned blue paper, uh, let's just start from the beginning. Alright, so. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, we're still working on mermaid prompts for this whole month. And as far as for today, uh, today's main theme is jumping right into the ink for our day four prompt. Uh, so I already have the sketch worked out. Uh, this is, like I said, the, uh, the toned blue mixed media paper from Strathmore. This is a 6x8 size. Um, a lot of times though, the mat boards that you're going to find that are around this size are going to be 5x7s. So something to keep in mind if you plan on matting your stuff uh, that you're probably going to just deal with having an inch border all the way around whatever, which can be great. You can wind up uh, creating something and then you realize like, oh, this would be a little bit more interesting if I offset it slightly within the mat. So you have like that inch of flexibility on either side. You can decide which inch to take off uh, within reason. You, you want to make sure you have a, at least a scant edge that's under the mat. Otherwise, it's not going to go great for framing wise. But anyways, I digress. Um, today, I changed up things just a touch as far as uh, sketching. Because with this toned blue, and this light back here, I was getting too much glare off the silver, like right now. I can't tell what that says, even though I know what the prompt is. From this angle, I'm getting so much glare, I can't see it. So, I've uh, broken out one of my polychromos to do the, my line work today. And that is in the light red violet. I have Nessie based kind of off of a plesiosaur. Uh, that's where I got the, the general idea as far as shape, um, why her tail is kind of stubby. The plesiosaurs have a pretty small tail, which makes sense. It's acting more like it's a like a rudder than uh, like land-dwelling mammals would be using that more for balance. This is purely a, a, an aquatic creature. So, um, that, that is our Lapis monster. Uh, she is currently swimming. So we have some just general flow lines for how the, the water would be uh, pushing away. I think I actually wanted some of these to connect in the front. Go ahead and sketch that in. So I'm just going to lightly come in. Um, this pencil does seem to erase pretty decently on here. I haven't done like a true scrub, so I don't know if I can go all the way back to uh, paper white, but it's again paper white it's it's not actually white because it's a toned blue paper but um, it's enough that I'm feeling pretty comfortable that I'm going to be able to cover all the lines that I, I put in here I do still have some random sketchy um, graphite lines from previously so I've, I've just left those alone they're not really getting in my way and that way we can move on to masking fluid so just in case you couldn't read, I, I think the, the camera picked it up pretty well, but uh, Galaxy, Loch Ness Monster, and Winter is our day four challenge. So I have the landmass off here to the right. I thought about surrounding the piece, but then I felt like that would be a really sad pawn for, for Nessie to be in. So like, let, let's not do that. I'll, I'll probably add a little bit of white pen here to go ahead and help really push Winter. Um, Hmm, actually. See, I thought I was going to do masking fluid. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to do masking fluid. Okay. So, um, I have a fine line masking fluid pen. This is the fine tip. It's a 0.5 millimeter. And the, one of the cool things is with this cap, you have this little wire inside of it that goes straight down. So that way it reduces clogging. So. That is awesome. I'm going to do some random spots here because to go ahead and get that galaxy effect, I'm going to just mask off where our stars, 
actually, I don't know how much pressure to give this, so this might take me a moment to figure it out. This is brand new to me. I've wanted a fine liner um, mask and fluid pen for a long while. It's one of those little things that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get that. Okay, that, that one's random drop. Some of these not being perfectly shaped is fine by me because some of these are stars and some of them are snowflakes. I might try to give some of these a little bit of a, like a cross type shape. And a little bit more in this other. So as you can see, you can go ahead and do a little bit of uh, detail with, with some of your dots. I'm going to zoom in for a moment so you can see that. The edges got really fine on this, and I'm okay with that. If you don't want your edges to go so fine, uh, you can definitely come in and uh, just do this a little bit darker. Uh, one of the reasons why I went with this particular one for this is that you could just squeeze out more if you want bigger dots. So I'm not worried about there being uh, really small dots or really large dots. Do a couple on the back of this too. Since most of these are small dots, they should dry pretty quickly. Coming back over a couple. Ooh, I got a leak. There we go. I don't know what I'm doing with that leak. But I'm currently trying to clean off my hand. I'm trying to get a second bottle. Awesome. Well, that's an easy thing to find out. Um, I've, like I said, never worked with this. Maybe I just didn't turn the cap all the way. I might put this on. Um, that's going to take a while to dry. I might just have to avoid doing washes in that area. This thing feels like it's tight. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so I got maybe like an extra quarter turn out of it. Um, man, that blot sucks. You know, I'm going to blot up what I can of it, so it's not going to take as long to dry, and I should be able to peel up the rest of it later. That means end of life for this particular rag, because once you have latex on stuff, it's not really absorbent for other things. And I'm going to zoom back out just so you can see what's going on. Oh, you had a nice close-up of that, uh, that blob there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll pick that up when, uh, when it's dry. We might have to wait another moment. It looks like it's a bubble. We're going to turn this into a star. I'm just going to drag the edges out. It is a bit bigger than I like, but you know what? Maybe that is our focal. That might have just become our focal. I like the idea of the the waves and the stars and the snowflakes. I might try to do like a little bit of a bluish cast over here where the snow is, or maybe purplish. I already have an idea. A, a vague idea for uh, for this as far as colors. Definitely sticking with like purples, blues. And now these are going a little bit too uniform, so I'm going to just throw in a random one. So I'm going back in wherever I think I might have gone a little bit too regular with this pattern. Just to go ahead and break that up. Um, I think I am going to do a really light glaze over here. Oh, those are pretty white. Hmm. I don't know what I'm doing over here. Mm 
three. Now this looks like two regular pattern. And we have star here, star here, star here. I do. These are a little bit too close, so I wanted to do one more kind of at random. Let's take this little dry guy over here. That was going really lobby, but you know what? I will live. So we're doing ink washes today. Um, I had a little bit of the uh, masking fluid built up on the end, so I went ahead and just wiped that off. And we should be done with the masking fluid pen. I didn't even get quite a, an extra quarter turn. So when you are putting the lid on this, apparently uh, you think it's tight, go ahead and give it an extra little twist because you don't want it to leak like mine did. That was user error. That was not the company's fault. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna peel that one up though. I'm not liking that one. But I'm gonna just kind of rub it this guy. Let's try. Alright, so I'm not getting really a good grip on that just with my finger. I don't want to go too tough on it with my nail because I don't want to mark the, uh, the surface before doing these ink washes. That's where you just grab your eraser and just come in. You get a little, little masking fluid booger. I have four kids, I mean, I don't even know what hookers look like. <laughs> uh, Alright, this one's not quite dry. That one's not dry either, but I knew that one would take a bit. Um, I want this one to come up, though. We'll get in a moment. Maybe I have too many. Maybe if I have too many dots. Angle them a little bit so they like mix them up. Even dots everywhere. They don't have so much of a, like a specific flow to them because we're just looking at it overhead. And this seems a little, a little bit static. Peeling this one early. I'm just gonna get the bottom layer to dry a little faster. This is not something I would normally recommend doing. Anyways, if you decide to mess with this, but still that, that is at your own risk. I normally recommend wait it, waiting for it to dry, carefully peel it up. Me, I'm just thinking about this from a science standpoint. Things dry faster as you increase their surface area. So I get this little wet spot spread out, then it will dry faster and I can just move on. Move on with my day. And actually, that peeled up just fine. I think it's because I put that over a dry star. Or snowflake. Um, that does seem a little bit awkwardly devoid. This seems dry enough. I want to give that one a little bit longer. This one's a little funky looking. Just going through it randomly. Removing them if I don't feel right about them. But anyways, um, let's see. These guys look good. So I'm thinking I want to go in with the white ink. I'm going to tone that just ever so slightly with a little bit of the turquoise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add actually like a drop of, well, two drops of white to our tray. The um, 
We're, we're gonna see how much coverage this gives us. I'm kind of like, hmm, do I want to go into that with the turquoise, or do I go into it with the, uh, the muted gray? I do want to keep those pretty monochromatic. I don't know if I'm going to include any of the blue. So using a little bit of the gray for the landforms. I'm actually going to use it for part of the galaxy too. I want this to be. I don't know, I, with this tone paper, everything kind of has this like antique feeling to me. I don't know if you guys agree. Right, that brush out of the way, pencil out of the way, because we're doing sketching. And I'm just wetting my script liner. Um, this is Silver Sterling Studio 6007S script liner, and it is a number two over zero. And that was a mess. And my camera suddenly wants to say, hey, we're low battery now. Of course you are. Great. So just added generous amount of pigment to the end of the brush so I can go ahead and just ever so slightly tint this white. I just want it to be a significantly lighter value than the washes that we'll be putting in but I also want things to kind of coordinate. So even though this is very very much so an illustration also, it's, it's my weird little world. So just mixing that together. Um, checking out our list here and hmm. I don't know what's going on with my music. I'll well, just give that a moment anyways. I'm just rinsing out the brush because I'm not going to use that script liner. Uh, it's just handy to add just the tiniest tint to a uh, to your mixes. So that's how I tend to use it if I want to go make sure that I go light. Because like even though this brush is a synthetic, uh, a really cheap synthetic, it doesn't hold a ton of water, but it holds significantly more water or pigment than that script liner. So I don't want to use that when I'm just trying to get just a tint. Um, blotting my brush dry. Want to go heavy with the white, and because I'm a lefty, I'm just gonna flip this upside down. I'm just gonna go right up to this edge. And then spread that out. And make sure that I'm in frame. <laughs> hmm. This is not quite as pigment heavy as I was hoping. I kind of feel like I need to be like shaping this as I go. Or else I'm going to have to just do a couple passes in order to uh Build this up to the opacity that I'm looking for. I don't really want this to look streaky. Just going to try to kind of sculpt a little bit of a pattern to it. And I didn't mix up enough. That's my fault. I didn't think this was going to need that much. You can see here I'm just kind of getting like a landmass and then letting it go a little bit sheer here. It'll kind of de depict like peaks and valleys. Um, yeah, this um, 
The stuff seems a little slow today. So anyways, um, now that I need to get to the other half of this, a couple more drops of white, just grabbing our brush again, a bunch of the muted gray, just to kind of get that mixed in. I don't really see it in the white that I've painted already, but if I do go ahead and try to paint bright white snowflakes over the top, which I might bring in my bleed proof white for that, I'm not sure. But anyways, the uh, the, the point I was trying to make, um, yeah, the, the way I just have the option to be able to pull a little bit more contrast because I've already slightly muted that way so it's not at the strongest strength that it could be at See if this will play. Claims to be playing, but I don't hear anything. Just refresh that whole playlist. It was almost at the last track anyway, so buy some time. track reminds me of the uh, John Wick soundtrack. Oh, it's entirely wrong for the feel for this piece. I'm not going to worry too much about going over the edge. Just good brush rooms. We're already 20 minutes in. I didn't have the uh, the masking fluid down earlier because I got carried away with uh, with our sea witch. I haven't done any more line work on her specifically, but I was working on her background, so I figure I'll show you that while I'm waiting for this white to dry a little bit more. I don't want to paint too close to the shore with that. I did go ahead and do a really loose shoreline uh, just to add some visual interest that I'm doing, going to do in a slightly less strength mixture um, so that, that will add to uh, the, the feeling of depth in this. Um, just for a quick moment. So, got some, some of the brown line work done. I didn't line the whole shelf because I hadn't filled it with contents and that can cover edges and things like that. And a little uh, lobster trap, so some line work there. But it is still making progress. Um, I really like this, this kelpie green. This is the muted green with just a bit of the... Um, which one was that? The raw umber? Yeah, that was the raw umber. It's the same color that I was using for this brown tone here. So that looks pretty 
good. Uh, this brown tone is with uh, just a, a little bit of water. There goes our battery change. That's the other reason I was kind of waiting to start doing the, uh, the mixes. I had a feeling the battery was going to go during the stream and I chose to go ahead and wait because it, it was still reading full when we ended the stream uh, yesterday. I didn't like you when you say last night. It wasn't that long ago. Well, last night was not. Uh, my brain sometimes. Anyways, now's a good time to do a quick uh, caffeinating break. To the uh, the pond. Those little sea monsters for the frame. This is such a silly thing. Great. So I will definitely need to do more white on the edge. Um, we'll worry about that as we go. So I have the little palette well clear, cleaned out already. So I don't like to leave acrylic on here if I don't need to. I do need to clean this brush better though. Oh, it's still a little muddy with pigment. Alright, so. Um, hmm. Maybe we start with a muted gray. And I'm gonna see how dark we can get the mask tone on this. I'm just doing, doing a drop to start um, because I want to go really dark for Nessie and go ahead and lay in just the, the deepest bits of these ripples. This is not the best brush to use for these edges, so I'm going to just gently block that in. It should have gone a bit thinner. Where the, I guess flipper meets the body. I'm a little heavy handed with that. That's alright. Just be a little more gentle with the rest of the washes. I'm gonna come back in with the script liner. Just to go ahead and screw up this his head here before we get a hard line. Let's see while we're painting her. 
Let me think about it. I don't know, I, I feel like approaching the mermaid prompts just feels a little different to me than than Wonderland did. I think part of that is the different reasons that I'm approaching this. But this one's more a challenge for me to go ahead and work on things like speed. But at the same time, while I'm feeling a little bit behind, it is a little bit of a push in this challenge for me. that feeling behind. I need to stop interfering with washes as they're drying. I'm even drawing pattern on the tail, and here I am, fiddling with it. I'm gonna leave her alone. We're gonna let Missy dry. Okay, I'm going to take this touch of water and just let a drop go down into our mixing well, because I don't want that drying too soon. Or not. It's not moving. It's fine because it'll be thinned out uh, for the next washes anyway. We'll probably do this next bit in two stages. Um, we're we'll go ahead and do kind of a, a light wash for the galaxy, um, or alternately, yeah, actually, that's what I can do while we're waiting for Nessie to dry. I'm going to go ahead in with the the muted gray. Mm, excuse me. <clears throat> go in with the muted gray. Uh, just to go ahead and. Oh no, that's not right. Um... Never mind. Never mind. I'm blanking that I wanted the um, that shoreline to be the um, the lighter spot. I could go in and try to do everywhere else slightly deeper with the muted gray wash, but then we're going to butt into the, the washes for Nessie. And that's going to mess up that. So, we're waiting for paint to dry. Uh, I think I'm going to give this a quick rinse. I probably could have left that damp and then just did another pass of the light. Waiting for stuff to dry sucks. And that's real life. It's not getting sugar coated time lapse stuff. I mean, it's. Okay, that sounds really unfair, actually. <laughs> okay, so what I mean by that is. You know, those time-lapse videos, they are absolutely a joy to watch. I get it. I love to see process videos. I watch a lot of them myself. But when you're somebody who's trying to learn, like to actually go out and do the thing, or even as a customer, you're not appreciating the actual time that went into the thing if you only see a time-lapse. I feel like, as much as they are entertaining to watch, they're not depicting reality. And when you escape reality too much, you have no idea what reality is anymore. Which is probably a little bit, um... A little bit funny to me that I'm having this talk because I'm actually about to start doing time lapses um, for other processes. But 
for sake of live streaming. This is what you get live. You have to wait for things to dry. You have to do things in order. There's a hair in this wash. Uh, this last little bit is plain white, just mixed in with the rest of the white. So the value is going to be slightly lighter. I may just have to tone down some of these landforms with a little bit of that muted gray. And I'm going to get good kind of dry brush. And I'm all off frame. I should know better. I've gotten so used to working at this desk in so strange, strange ways. You should see when I'm doing line work when I'm off camera. <laughs> I like breaking out my uh, my art board with the uh, the clip on it and just have it perched up up like by my chest, like three or four inches from my face, and then I have to keep reaching over to the ink the ink is on my desk because I don't want to have that sitting at an angle or else it would be on me. Just the silliness. Alright, well, that is looking better. Messy is still drying. Hmm, that's what I can do. I'm just going to do some of these lines here. I wanted these to be at a slightly darker value um, because I had mixed water in with that muted gray earlier. I'm just adding another drop of gray so it's a little bit closer to concentrated color. I don't want it as dark as Nessie, but I do want a fairly dark value to be able to stand up to the washes that we're going to be doing. These washes are going to be fairly thin. And good time on camera. I'm still having a little bit of trouble seeing everything, so I'm going to be tilting this just a touch. Thank <laughs> you. 
Look at that, I've been on mute for a while. I'm sorry. I, uh, I tend to do that a bit more when my, uh, my kiddo's gaming. So, I've been talking for a good bit and nobody's heard a thing that I've said because I've been mute. And I'm just a slight glaze here. interrupt this thing going on. This neat edge definitely fits into that, that galaxy thing that I'm going for. And then I'm not liking that edge. I, mean, I didn't get to this section in time, but for the most part, I like where it's going, like especially this. It's just letting that wash get really wet and diving in there. Really irregular edges, so I think that's cool. I think there's a lot of cool spots here. Uh, definitely needs a secondary pass to go ahead and increase the depth because I didn't go as deep as I should for like, this section here. And then I also want to go deeper in, in this section too. Uh, so, what I'll probably do is lay down some ink and do some spray. Um, yeah, that splatter um, from adding the mist. I have fine dots all over this white area. I might just need to do that with bleed proof white. Um, if, it is, if it might be too distracting, I don't know. You know, what do you think of our, our fine little mist of dots? But it is doing some cool stuff. It's definitely feeling more galaxy. Right now I'm just debating, do I want to bring in like a third color? Well, technically a fourth if you're including white. Hmm. There's a lot, of, a lot of good moments, a lot of weird moments on this. I think I'm going to let this sit for the day before I'm adding the darker glazes, just to get a better feel of what's next because I'm not sure if I want to do a darker color or start bringing maybe white. I feel like this edge needs more contrast though. We'll see. Yeah, definitely, definitely on the undecided side today. Um, so what I will do, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna do the, the darker glaze here at the very least. I know I want to, to do a little bit more of the the muted blue. Um, this, this passage is kind of cool. I don't know if I'm going to keep that. I'm not sure. 
I also want to go a bit darker on this. Oops, I'm out of frame. On this bottom edge. So I want to go a little bit darker on this bottom edge. It's not something that's going to be really in frame, depending on where I take that inch. Like I said, this is a six by eight, but the frame, the, the mat I'm probably going to put it in will be a five by seven. So I'm going to lose up to an inch on each side. That could be like half inch here, half inch here, or it could be most of an inch there, and you just have enough here that goes behind the mat board that it looks like a stable image. So it's, it's a fun thing when you're putting these into a frame because you add that cropping and you choose where the focal is. So you can make those, those types of adjustments on the fly. I really like that. Um, Maybe I'll do secondary pass with metallic. I was, I've, I've been avoiding my metallics because they are, they can be troublesome when you're scanning. But I, I don't know. I feel like that would be really fun here to go in with, like maybe the, uh, the iridescent rose gold or something like that, like that or the silver. So do you want to keep this on a a cooler palette? I'll roll it over. But anyway, um, let's see. We should be able to move forward with our day five prompt. Because whatever I do of this later that I, that I will show you, um, I'm going to do maybe like subtle accents, like, you know, show you the, the contrast in the waves before we go ahead and remove the masking fluid and then we'll sharpen up the stars. So. I don't know, let me know. What do you think? Do you want to see more of this process? Or do you want to see, like, let's let's get on with the next thing. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just start sketching ahead uh, for the next couple prompts. And those will just exist as sketches. Maybe they'll, they'll be works for later on. But just to, I don't know, figure out where my brain is for the, uh, the next few. Next prompt was Day 5, Sun, Atlantis, Tribal. And then we have Moon, Sunken Ship, Demon. And then Day 7, which is today, should have been Phantom, Treasure, Song. Those all sound really neat. I feel like working through all these prompts is one of those I'm going to have a lot of images that I'm going to want to work on more. So maybe this some of this month will be a little bit more sketchy and a little bit less inking. But I, I definitely want to work on a good bit with you because I feel like that's an interesting part of the process is you know, having people who are new to the mediums just play and experiment and these are things that when you're working on commissions you don't necessarily do as much because you want to have certain techniques like nailed down you don't want to be just doing things off the cuff for, for commissions and part of mermaid for me uh, moving forward with prompt challenges is to, to play and let things get a little bit chaotic and out of control and I think that maybe that, that's a little more entertaining too for some viewers is to see like okay well what's gonna happen when we do this and for me galaxies are definitely a what's going to happen because you have to give up that control you can only tilt things in your favor you're not so much uh, actually in control of the whole thing like I yeah, I, I put down the colors in, in general where I wanted them. And that doesn't mean they're going to do what I want them to. And the, the timing for that spray is perfect for the blue. Um, I'm going to, to zoom in on the blue while we're while I'm still rambling here. Uh, because that, that was just dry enough where it didn't just run but it has this wonderful little speckle. Nowhere else got that same texture because this these areas were more wet. This was just dry enough where it was just, and it exploded into this little 
little speckle thing going on in its wash. So I'm really liking that. Um, I have a couple little gaps of color. That's fine. I kind of like that. Maybe it's a maybe it's a slightly cloudy day. Maybe it's just distortions on the water and just random highlights here and there. I'm just kind of living with it, mulling around. We'll see how much more happens with this, and then you know, getting into the other challenge prompts. Um, let me know. What, what do you feel more like? Do you feel more like let's see all the prompts, like at least sketches, concepts, or? Are you enjoying just sitting here and being part of the, the process and watching where all that, that goes? So, definitely looking forward to hearing your input. And I'll go ahead and back up a bit. It's so rainy and overcast here. So I'm working on something that is, even though it's muted color, it just feels brighter than uh, the rest of my day has been. So uh, that's kind of nice. Alright, well, it's been fun chatting with you today, and as always, you keep drawing.